What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. Today we are finally getting our CD009 transmission mounted up to our K24 engine for our Subaru BRZ engine swap. Let's do it. All right, so the first thing that we need to do is actually to measure the tip of this starter motor. And the reason that we need to do that is because of the fact that when this thing is mounted flush, if I can get it, there we go, you can see that this, the tip of this starter motor here actually protrudes outside of this adapter plate. And that is a problem because this is going to make contact with the outer mounting surface of our transmission of the CD009. And so what we're going to have to do is actually cut our bell housing just a bit to make room for this. You don't want to try and cut your starter motor to fit your bell housing because then your starter motor is not gonna work. So basically all I'm gonna do is just get this bolt tightened down so that uh, this guy sits in place and I'm not having to hold it. Then I'm just gonna measure how much distance off of this I need to cut for my bell housing. And then what I'm gonna need to do is actually take this adapter plate off of the engine and place it onto the transmission. And the reason I need to do that is because of the fact that based on where this lines up in terms of the you know, circular position, I don't wanna cut a section out of the bell housing and have it be the wrong spot. So I'm gonna measure this distance and I'm gonna take this bracket off put it onto the bell housing of the transmission and maybe even try to put this guy back in and just sort of see where this is going to line up with the outside of the bell housing. Then I can mark the bell housing with a Sharpie or something, cut it out with an angle grinder and we can move on. So let's get this guy tightened down. So now I'm basically just gonna grab a set of calipers and we'll measure that. Take that, set that flat surface on there. and then take this measurement, 12 millimeters. Yeah, so basically now I know that the amount, the depth at which I need to make that cut from the surface of the bell housing back to make sure that this doesn't make any contact with it is about 12 millimeters deep. So now I guess I'll measure how wide it needs to be or how far out I need to cut it. Basically just kind of trying to measure the diameter here. That's about 41 mil, it's about an inch and a half. So the cut that I'm gonna to need to make, I might just play it safe and go about two inches around and half an inch deep just to be, just to make sure that we're clearing this and it's not actually touching. We don't want this necessarily to be making contact with the bell housing. We just wanna clear it so there's enough space. So now what I'm gonna do is get the starter pulled back off get this uh, mounting bracket pulled off and I'm actually gonna throw this onto the CD009 just temporarily, it's, you know, I'm not bolting it on permanently. I'm just trying to basically put it in place so that I know where the tip of this starter motor is going to be making contact. So let's get this guy pulled off. So we got this off. And so now our adapter plate comes off. Now we're basically just going to take this surface, bolt this onto the front of the bell housing. So normally if we are looking at the back side of the engine, if this was if this surface here was mounted onto the back side of the engine, and this is your starter hole. So this front surface that we're looking at actually needs to bolt onto the bell housing of the transmission. So let's figure out how this thing goes on because these three holes right here, one, two, and three, normally go flat all the way across the top of the engine. But because of the fact that the engine sits at an angle in this direction, then that means that it's gonna have to be slightly offset this way. So let's see if we can figure out which of these bolts goes and mounts to the myriad of bolt holes all around this whole adapter. So let's see if I can get this thing put on. So as a part of the Collins adapter swap kit that I'm using, um, it comes with all of the hardware that you need to bolt 
the 350Z on, or 350Z, the CD009 from the 350Z onto the K24. And we've got some big bolts and some small bolts. So let's pull these out and take a look at what we got. So we've got five of these large, probably M10 or maybe even M12 bolts. And then we have three of these smaller bolts. So uh, let's figure out if I can't find where these things go in and get that adapter put on. I totally forgot that this adapter plate has a pin here and a pin here. And so these go into this pin or this real pin hole and this pin hole. So that actually should make this way easier to line up. You just that pin hole in there and this pin hole in here. And that should, for the most part, get you where you need to be. Oh. All right, and from there, it's easy peasy. Now you just figure out which bolts are long enough to go into which holes. So if this is where our starter is going to go, then this is the section that we need to cut. Uh, I really would prefer not to have to cut uh, both of these sections because of the fact that this outer section is the outer wall of the bell housing. And so I'd kind of like to keep that closed because I don't want to have a hole here on the top where dirt and debris and all kinds of other garbage can get into the bell housing and get all of this, which I just replaced all of this a couple of videos ago, uh, and get all of this stuff dirty. because I just got all this nice and clean and operating smoothly. So I want to try and keep the inside of this as clean as possible. I'm basically just going to take my starter motor, hold it into this gap, and uh, see if it's gonna be possible for me to not cut this top section, like I was just saying. Basically, the back side of this little mark here is right where it lines up with the bracket. So I know how wide this is going to be because I can measure it from top to bottom. I can measure the total distance of basically the thickness of this piece so that I know the diameter at that section. So I know if I need to cut this top section or not because again I only really want to cut this so measure out a section on the inside here of basically half an inch deep and one and a half inches wide and try and get that cut out and then I'll maybe do a little bit more test fitting just with the starter and with the you know the knowledge I have around the thickness of the engine block at the back here and uh, we'll just have to kind of make a judgment call on whether that's going to be good enough so that I can go ahead and get this thing bolted onto the engine. But before I make any cuts, I'm actually going to probably take like a trash bag or something and tape it along the inside of this bell housing covering all of this stuff. Because again, I just replaced the throwout bearing, the clutch fork. This is all new, you know, lubricant in and around here. So I wanna try and keep this thing as clean as possible. I'm basically just gonna tape around the inside of this so that as I'm cutting, I'm not just throwing metal shavings all over these brand new parts. Okay, and so this is more or less what it looks like. So this here is the section that I'm going to be cutting. Hopefully that's enough. I may just go ahead and take this instead of uh, kind of ending up short. I may just take this all the way to the end of this slot here. And who knows, I might end up actually bringing this out another eighth of an inch, quarter of an inch, something like that, just to make sure that it's wide enough. And I've measured this out. It was a, what, 12 mil for the tip of the starter. I measured the depth to about 15 mil, just kind of trying to cut a little teeny bit wider than at like the actual measurements state. And I'm not, I haven't uh, marked anything out on this outer section because I don't want to cut that before I remove this this whole smorgasbord of uh, plastic and tape. I'll uh, see if I can do kind of another rough sort of semi test fit to make sure that I don't need to actually cut this outer lip. So with that, we're just gonna grab an angle grinder and a cutoff disc, see if we can't cut through that. Is that gonna be enough? I really have no idea. 
here is the cut that I have made. I really don't know if it's going to be deep enough, wide enough, all that. I've put the, uh, I've just put the adapter back on here just for kind of trying to find a reference. I may sort of mess around with uh, placing a little spacer here to account for the engine block and then trying to uh, see if the uh, starter motor will fit into that gap that I've just cut there. So I'm going to do a little bit of troubleshooting and just kind of figure out if I need to cut any more. But I don't know, there's uh, about a 50-50 chance that I do need to kind of widen this out and make it just a hair deeper. So I'll get back with you. After a lot of just kind of test fitting with putting the bracket on, putting the starter in place and kind of trying to estimate to the best of my ability the position where the starter is actually going to sit. I decided to cut this back wider just a little bit all the way. So this, uh, this slot kind of ran all the way up to this edge. So I just kind of cut out to that edge. And then I decided to widen out this side a little bit as well. And I kept the depth the same because of the, just based on the test fitting that I've done, it clears it by, you know, a few millimeters. So I think that's good. Uh, as you can see, I did kind of get some nicks on the, uh, <laughs> on the outer layer there, which should be fine. They're not deep at all. And I'm retaining this outside edge. So um, I'm probably just going to bring some sandpaper and just kind of clean this up. So all those edges aren't super sharp or anything. But uh, after that, we'll just get the inside of this cleaned up because I don't know if you can see all of this dust and stuff, everything that came off while I was cutting. So I'm definitely glad that I taped all of this up. But anyway, let's get all of this cleaned up. Let's get the tape and the bag removed. And hopefully I really don't have to redo all of this and come back and cut away more space because this, it didn't take a long time. It's just kind of annoying to have to redo, so. And with that done, hopefully correctly and on the first try, fingers crossed, um, it's time to put our adapter plate back on, bolt it all down, get the starter put in place before I put the transmission onto the back of the engine. And I want that starter in place because of the fact that I want to know if that is causing a bind whenever I go to put the transmission on and that'll kind of tell me if I need to go back and clear some more space, which hopefully we don't have to do. I think I cut away enough material, but we won't know until we try it. So let's get this bracket bolted back on and then we'll move on. I'm gonna test fit the transmission onto this plate, this adapter plate. And if it is able to sit flush as in as long as I've cleared enough space for this, then I'll just back it out, torque these bolts down to spec because you have to be on this side to be able to access those bolts. And then hopefully get the transmission put back on, get all the bolts put in, torque those down, and that'll be job done, engine, transmission, together. Roll our transmission over here. Basically, I'm just going to lower the engine until it's low enough to meet the transmission, which I'm just going to have to kind of go back and forth a couple of times and try to eyeball this. So because of the fact that the engine is going to sit on a tilt in this direction, because of the fact that I have it sitting vertical, to account for that, I need to turn the transmission the opposite direction because where the starter is and where the slot that I cut for the starter is currently here. So I need to roll the transmission over slightly until it meets up with this spot. All right, so, oh, okay. So the splines on the input shaft and the splines on the crankshaft are now touching or, you know, making contact. 
So if I wanted to, I could just kind of slide this thing forward. And we've finally gotten it all put together. This was much more difficult than I was expecting it to be, just trying to get the right angle because if you take a look here, the vertical center line of the transmission actually doesn't line up perfectly with the center of the engine. That's because the engine sits on an angle this way. So when the transmission is vertical up and down, the trans will be at that kind of one o'clock type of an angle. So, oh man, this was a lot of just kind of grabbing this thing underneath, lifting it up like this, lifting this back end up to get the uh, input shaft of the transmission to fit, to slip through all the different things to get through the front here. That was a lot of work and I actually wasted a ton of time because of the fact that the adapter kit from Collins doesn't include any instructions or even which of these holes you need to use and which size of bolts that they include need to go in which holes. Because there's actually two different uh, sizes. There's an M12, there's five of those. One, two, three, four, five across the top. And then there's uh, two M10 bolts, one here, and then one on the other side near down near the bottom. But huh, anyway, I'm just happy to finally have all of this in one piece. And that's gonna wrap it up for this video, guys. Thank you so much for watching. I really hope you found it helpful. And if you enjoyed the video, then make sure to give it a thumbs up down below. Subscribe to the channel so you can follow the build and all the other content we got coming on the channel. And until next time, build your dreams.